Welcome to the Startup Grind. You you spend you spend a good amount of time in New York, right? Do you where where do you live? Where what tell us about you know how often you're here? Where where are you at any given time? You tell us about it. Uh, Facebook gets complicated. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last year I was on the road 290 days out of the year, so I travel quite a bit. Um, I have places in uh, Houston where my home base, San Francisco, and New York. I've actually just moved here. I'm not a Manhattan unicorn. So, uh, Don't give the address. Um, Party later. What? <laughs> I feel like I should whisper too. Um, tell us about what what makes New York special in your mind. You're you're you know you've spent all this time in Houston. You spent time in in Silicon Valley and San Francisco. What what is uniquely special about where we are right now? What I love about New York is the culture. Place I have so much fun, I lose my voice. <laughs> so there's something about it. Uh, also, the people. I know we'll get the Q and A in a little bit. Uh, last night I was at a WordPress meetup. That Q and A I've done all year because of the questions. The uh, just the people who are not out New Yorkers are cool, but I'm preaching to the choir. You guys know this. Tell us about what? What about on the entrepreneur side? You're an investor. Uh, you've invested in in a bunch of New York based companies. What what is different about the you've also invested in companies in Palo Alto, like Wealthfront, uh, and in San Francisco like Hipmunk. What is different about the entrepreneurs here, what, good and bad? What what do they have? Uh, what ingredients do they have that are different from, from somebody on the West Coast or someone internationally? Just like hiring an automatic, I don't consider location at all when doing an investment. Um, I'm a big believer of work. Agnostic. So, uh, I'm automatic. We're now about 120 people uh, in about 170 cities. So, most people work from home in the city by themselves. So, we just you know, try to look for the best people in the world, regardless of where they are, and try to do the same with investing. What, what is the uh, talk to us about Audrey Capital? Where, first of all, where does that name come from? And, and, and why did you, what was your first investment? How did you get started? Uh, what do you look for? We're, you know, we talked about people helping each other. It, you know, what what do you look for? What are what can people in the room look for for you to? You don't want more emails, probably, but um, but what what is it? You know, what is it that makes what you do unique and, and different? I don't know if it's unique or different, but uh, Audrey's name for uh, Audrey Hepburn. Any Audrey Hepburn fans here? Cool. We targeted them for this. <laughs> And, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, one of the first companies you advised was a Sphere, and uh, with and that I assume came through Tony. Was that uh, or the Tonys maybe? Uh, what uh, you know? What what about investing in companies you, you pay it for? What what is the best part for you? Um, what is the part that uh, 
you know, that, that you get pleasure out of it or that keeps you doing it because you, you continue. I mean, and you've made great, absolutely great investments. You've, you, uh, you were in MakerBot, which has exited. Uh, you were in Bout.me, uh, which exited and now it's come back uh, <laughs> from the dead. Um, so w what, what about it, you know, do you, what about it is worth your time or do you, do you like about it? I love the entrepreneurial process. So just when you see something go from idea that everyone thinks is dumb and crazy to something that takes over the world, actually the ones that have sold have only been doing this four or five years. If something sells at this point, it's a little bit bittersweet, right? Like MakerBot's amazing, but I think they should be bigger than HP, you know? They should be buying status, it's not the other way around. And uh, so it's always, it's always great when an entrepreneur is able to find an exit, but you're always thinking, you're invested, Can you tell us about how you've met some of these people you talked about through relationships? But it would, it would be interesting to know even the specifics of if you wanted to pick pick a company like a rap genius, they're, they're based here. How do you meet these entrepreneurs? How quickly do you make the decisions? What about whether it's them or someone else you wanted to, to kind of pinpoint on? Um, you know, what tell us, give us a specific example of someone that you know you met with and, and what that process, you know, logistics of that look like. Yeah, rap genius is actually kind of so many ways. Um, I just cold emailed them huh. because I was using the site like, every day because I love rap music. You were, uh, you were contributing or you were just re just browsing? I'm not going to tell you my account. <laughs> <laughs> we really want it. But yeah, I love, I love rap music. And um, sometimes I feel like I discover some things in there that I like to have there. Um, so I emailed them just out of the blue. Talk to us that we t I talked to the 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 people that are here tonight before you came in, and people are really interested in hearing about uh, your story. And uh, I'm sure I know you've told it told it before, and we would love for you to tell some of it again tonight. Something I never whispered it. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> One of the things that's really unique about you is that, and I have no, no comeback to that, um, <laughs> I have probably done 50 or 60 of these, and you are the first whisperer, um, <laughs> so this is really special for me, too. Um, I feel a connection. It's <laughs> strong. It's really strong. Um, you know, you're, you're one of the, so I, I talk to a lot of founders, and you're one of the few that 10 years later is still working on the same thing. And, and it continues to grow, and it continues to have influence. And, um, you know, we've had Hitmonk, it's a two-year-old company, or About.me, we've had Tony Conrad. You know, he, they built that thing and sold it before it even launched. And um, I wonder if you could talk to us about, do you remember when uh, you had the first spark of the idea of, hey, I'm going to do this? And... And where did that come from, and and what was it like very, very early at the very beginning? So, as you said, we're going to uh, just celebrate the 10th anniversary in May. That's what my shirt is from. Let's give it a run. That's pretty big. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely the longest relationship I've ever been in. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's because you live in New York and San Francisco. Come on, man. Get down to Palo Alto. We'll get you. We'll get you settled in. <laughs> Houston. No, you're from Houston. Come on. Okay. That's actually where it started. And this is this is in two thousand three, yeah. and and to talk about it, it seems like what happened over the next six months, twelve months, eighteen months. Um, how much time did you put into it? How quickly did it grow? Tell tell us about you know how did it how did it start in terms of growth and your effort? Like full time full time or. When is the, when and when was this exactly? It's probably 2003, 2004. 2004. Yeah. And one danger of making blocking software is uh, you gave all your customers paying a bonus. Right. So if they're unhappy with you, they block about it. <laughs> <laughs> Switching the WordPress. Mm -hmm. There's this one guy, I 
think he works for Google now, actually. His name is Mark Pilgrim. He wrote an amazing essay. He called it Freedom Zero. Mm -hmm. And he said, it's not about the money. What happened is Mobile Time was free enough because it was open and I could change the code. Mm -hmm. I assumed the software belonged to me. But it turns out it really didn't because when they decided to change their business model, I was going to have to pay $565. But he said, it's not about the money. Zero refers to the four freedoms of the GPL. Freedom zero is the freedom to use the software for any purpose. That means if I grow like little devil wants, you guys all work rich just as much as I do. I can't say who can use it or not. I can't say you can't use it for anything. And so, um, it was all about that open source freedom, which honestly, open source is the most powerful idea I've been exposed to in my lifetime. I believe in it and promote it even more than WordPress. So he switched over and it started this stampede. It was our first big one. And so, so the first two weeks before that kind of that moment happened, uh, were, was there any traction on? Was it just you felt like were you getting customers ask you for it, or was it just something you felt like, hey, well, we should have this. That's the dominant platform. We should we should make this easy for people. Or um, yeah, we focus a lot on ease of use. So an importer was obvious. Uh, the cool thing about writing an importer is it forces you to have parity, right? Meet your parity. So you need to, they supported multiple categories, and we didn't at the time. So first I had to write the multiple categories feature uh, before we could do an importer for it. So it worked really well. And, and to that point, you, I mean, can you, do you remember how many users you had? How many, how many blogs have been created? We were probably getting 50 or 100 downloads per day. Okay. And it went to, um, went to about 2,000. Um, today we do north of 100,000 downloads a day. That's pretty decent. <laughs> um, what? How are you paying yourself? Did you have any way? Were, did you were you working on the side? Did you have another job? Was there any income coming from it, and or were you just doing it? Uh, I play the saxophone, <laughs> and so I play in gigs around Houston. For you were paid, like paid to play? Yeah. Wow. Um, mostly big band stuff. Um, it was union gigs, so you get like a you sign a little union card. And I did those, and I, I made websites and built computers, mostly for my jazz musician friends. And my grandma's a realtor, so I did it for realtors too. I would buy all the parts from you know, whatever retail place, and put them together, and make a computer, and fix it if it ever broke. Or websites, I'd make these terrible websites, <laughs> like using the front page and treating me for and stuff. <laughs> and I'd kind of cobble it together, you know, you roll over, and it changes the image. <laughs> there were guest books and forums. And, uh, but once I started on WordPress, uh, the, I was still doing the web consulting. And I started to try to use WordPress for all the projects, which was a learning process as well. Because it wasn't a CMS at the time, it was just a blogging software. So if you want to use a CMS, you use something like Drupal or PHP Nuke or some one of these other software. Were you were you worried at all? I mean, you hit this tipping point, leading up to that point, and, and the reason I keep asking that is because a lot of people are at that point where you know things aren't going perfect, and you you, you know you you've turned the switch, and it's not like it's like it's not like those dot com commercials where it's like you know everyone sits around the computer and then like you know the orders start pouring in right. It's not. It's the exact opposite of that. Like no one cares what you're working on. Um, and except your mom and your sister, um, one of your sisters, and um, so I only have one. You was you're okay. Um, <laughs> so, like, do you remember moments at that time where you thought, "Hey, I'm gonna like I'm gonna just shut this down. This is not worth continuing. I'm, I could be pretty successful saxophonist. I mean, were were you you know? Did you have do you, do you have moments like that where you thought? Like this is this is this might be a huge waste of time, or did you just or did you look at it in a different way and say, hey, whatever happens happens. I'm not expecting anything. I mean, what what was your thought process, and did you did you hit any points where you came close to to this never even happening? Uh, with WordPress never, because it wasn't the goal wasn't money or anything. The goal was just software for my website. <laughs> that was long way a website. It was worth working on the software. Um, the fact that other people have found it useful has been a very lucky coincidence in my life. Um, so it never, but definitely once the company started, which automatic started, I mean, you know, being an entrepreneur is a total roller coaster. And on the covers of the magazines, we see the people on their best day ever, you know, on the cover of 
even still today? Is it still? I mean, is it still hard? Is it? You got a hundred. You're getting a hundred thousand. Did you say a hundred thousand dollars a day? Is that number right? Hundred thousand downloads. Hundred thousand downloads. Excuse yeah. me. So, um, so t t what happened after this? After this tipping point, what happened? What happened from there? They're still around, I think, aren't they? Yeah, they came CBS publishing. Yeah. CBS online. It was actually I'll tell you guys the funny story. So at the time I was really obsessed with uh, Google actually. So I wanted to be the number one uh, result for Matt. When you search for Matt in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and so about every every time This is before the dancing day. Matt guy, right? Or is this I'll tell you about that. Okay. <laughs> 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 so I reached number one. When? <laughs> so it's been probably 2005. Okay. Yeah, 2000, no, 2004. And um, so I, I replaced my website with this, just a screenshot of the results. <laughs> 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 and then I, uh, I made these business cards, and they, they just said, uh, uh, one, go to Google, two, type in Matt, <laughs> three, press, I'm feeling lucky. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty funny, uh, but they broke. <laughs> the business cards don't work anymore, because there's this dancing guy. Yeah. You guys know, I mean, that's like this sort of thing around the world. A real star. <laughs> so yeah, he does this video where he dances, and then the background changes. He goes all around the world. Yeah, it's one of the first viral YouTube videos. And his website's where the hell is Matt .com. Eventually. What's funny is I I didn't even no, I mean I haven't even I've never heard that story, and uh, but as soon as you said Matt, that's the guy I thought of. Is that dancing guy on YouTube? <laughs> But second, then I was like, I'm interviewing Matt Mullen. <laughs> so, shift, shift gears. So. The thing I put on the website was, I'm going to go to San Francisco in a few weeks. I was staying with my friend, uh, Dr. Chellick, who at the time worked at Microsoft to work on Internet Explorer. So a bunch of people emailed me and said, hey, if you're going to San Francisco, come visit. So I went to Google. I went to Yahoo. I went to a bunch of companies around. I forgot to see the Golden Gate Bridge or ride a cable car. Because <laughs> so I was just going to all these In, in your trip out there, this is, if I know the story right, the, the true guys, Tony and Tony, did, did they encourage you to come out? You, you met them, you met them, was that after that that you met them? Yeah, so the guy that connected me to everyone uh, who I still work with today is this journalist named Old Malik. Mm -hmm. um, he's my brother from another mother. Mm -hmm. um, he has a little site called Giga Home. At the time, he was a journalist at Business 2.0.
You needed a drink, is that what you're saying? Teller should at least give you a high five or something, right? You're awesome. I don't know you, but you're awesome. Nothing happened. It was the most anti about this decision to raise money and to go down that path because as you say you're profitable you didn't necessarily need it you're you're you kind of have been building this thing and, and building this community um why go that route what what was appealing to you um and and what you know what kind of changed your mind from bootstrapping and and figuring it out on your own to then getting these other people involved to help it was a pretty tough decision because starting the company was easy, actually, because the thing with WordPress was starting to get adoption at the time, but it was still very hard to use. Um, you needed like a, a MySQL database to set it up. You had to do a lot of technical things to get it going. And I thought, wow, if we could make this like one click easy to start a WordPress, I think it could be a lot more popular. But the, the 
You're gonna be paid. Yeah. Uh, at least a year, right? And so that was where we raised a million dollars. Um, it was to kind of have that buffer, so that if things went wrong, we could still take care of the people. Can you talk about how you look at uh, your kind of social responsibility? And you seem to be, you know, again, ten ten years in. You, everyone is. You know, it, this whole thing with, you know, what Warby Parker does or what Tom Shoes does, I mean, it, it seems quite common now for people to have this kind of socially minded, impact minded strategy along with their commercial strategy. But can you talk to us about how you look at it and how, you know, you're, you're very, you're way ahead of people on, on the way you think about it. Tell us how, how you look about, uh, look, at, look at that responsibility that you have in, in building this company and product. Take a break. Or? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just kind of think. I'm just hoping you don't faint or something right now. <laughs> Keep rolling. Keep rolling. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's a great point. Actually, that's what I was going to say next. Hashtag start grind at photo map. Um, uh, please, please tweet what he, he was just saying. Take pictures if it happens. Um, uh, Valley wag, you know, <laughs> Matt collapses. Um, so talk talk to us a little bit about balancing. Uh, you want a drink? Sir, you good? Um, how do you balance that with working with capitalists like venture capitalists? Um, <laughs> you know, you have good investors. You work with good people. You have a, a great CEO and partner. And um, like, how, how do you balance those things? Of yeah, okay, we're we're totally impact driven. It's you know, it's it's this it's this thing like um, people that run nonprofits. A lot of times, I see. You know, it's it's almost like if you if you do make money, there's almost something. Not everyone, but a lot of them. There's kind of something maybe wrong with what you're doing, or maybe you're not putting enough into the impact side. And then if you're, you know, running a company, maybe you're putting too much into the impact side. So how do you how do you balance those things, and how do you balance expectations of people that you're working with, shareholders, investors?
things are down. When you, when the new product doesn't sell as well as you thought, or the user numbers are down, or the key person leaves, that's when you really need that support of a great investor. Um, we're very lucky. We're with all the same investors that we started. And just this year, brought on a new one, uh, Tiger Global. We bought actually $125 million uh, from one of our early investors, Polaris. So Polaris had a timeline that was running out. Hmm. Well, what does you mention community? What what does community mean to you? Do you like how do you look at it? What do you define as this community? You truly have a great community, but it's this word that's kind of thrown around a lot. So, would love to know how you look at how you look at it and what it what it means.
So we, uh, I want to, we're going to take some questions right now. Um, but I, I just want to say that, um, you know, it's rare that uh, I get to talk to somebody whose product impacts uh, me and the community or business that I work on. And, you know, WordPress, uh, it, you know, we, I spend more time on WordPress uh, with Startup Grind uh, than any other site uh, other than Rap Genius. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, I don't spend a lot of time there. Um, but we, you know, we have 150 people around the world who, uh, who e our whole lives, everything, our whole community runs, you know, through WordPress. And, and uh, I was going to get our CTO down here from Toronto, but I, they would have stopped him at the border or something. So, um, but, you know, I just, on behalf of our community, you know, I wanted to say thank you so much for what you've created because uh, it has made, I don't know how we would do what we do without, without what you've done. So, um, and that's not, that's not, I'm sure you hear that a lot, but, um, but uh, we, you know, our whole, you know, everything that we do is, is, is powered by what you have done. And so, uh, so we're very, very grateful for that and appreciate you coming out here and Thank you. give Matt a big, big round of applause. <laughs> so who's, who's uh, let's take some questions if you've got a question. And I'll try and bring you the mic, if not, I'll repeat it. Matt, thanks. Uh, that was great. Uh, I wanted to mention that when you started getting lightheaded, I Googled the uh, effects of whispering on Lyme and 67 out of 100 people in the study were stressing their, their vocal cords. So yeah. just, just wanted to let you know. I, I tried not to talk today. <laughs> Save it for you guys. <laughs> and I'm probably not going to talk the rest of the week. So you can do this. All right. So my question. Luckily, we almost never talk. We just type everything. <laughs> <laughs> so that won't help. Uh, I'm curious when, uh, in building your team, uh, it sounds like culture was really important to it. You have a, an idea of what you guys are doing with the world. Uh, I was wondering how you defined that culture and how, or whether you had a, a metric or rubric uh, in measuring that uh, across the different employees. Hi, Matt. My name is Gabriel. Um, first thing first, I'm kicking myself because I have the same shirt gray, number one. Um, number two, what would you say in the 10 years of WordPress is the hardest hurdle you've had to deal with? As far as everything, maybe, I would say maybe how about development, though, I guess would be the way to pinpoint it. Yeah, I think.
person doesn't see. So that's not wisdom. Um, it's not what you asked about. I'll say something about that as well. I've uh, that's something that took us a very long time to figure out, and I still hate it to this day. Like firing someone doesn't get any easier, but we do. We're a lot better about it now because. So you had this open source thing going initially, and it didn't sound like you really had much of a revenue plan from the beginning. It was more about the open source. So how did you make a decision about where you were going to try and make money then, and how do you decide where you want to devote resources uh, for revenue now? It's kind of funny. So while we were raising money, it was very much an end now problem because you know the best way uh, saying we don't need money. <laughs> and so um, one of the investors built her essentially it was more of an east coast old school and um, I know I wanted them involved because they were bigger so our first second round was 30 million dollars and they did 20 of that so they were able to step up in a big way um, when our needs increased but I wasn't sure that was going to happen so I wanted them in the mix and, uh, and so the guy in my church me that and he did can you come out to Boston and actually roll them in person to our partners. And I'm like, cool. And he's like, and by the way, do you have like a business plan or anything <laughs> that you can send over? And I kind of, I was a little rebellious about this, so we had an internal wiki. So I, I made a wiki page. That was the business plan, partly because I wanted to say that it was always in flux, like it wasn't something set in stone. And it was just a little one pager. But what's funny, if you go back and look at that, exactly what we're doing today still. So the idea was that we have this hosted service and we have something like ringtones for blogs, like little upgrades. Uh, you know, everywhere from $12 to $100 to buy some. Um, and that's the bulk of our revenue today. Um, the other thing was add-on services for people who run WordPress themselves. A lot of people don't know this, but actually before we launched WordPress.com, we launched something called Kismet. Kismet is an anti-spam plugin for WordPress that's now blocked over 100 billion spams and has five nines of accuracy, which is highly unusual for an anti-spam system. But um, it's the first thing I've worked on when I've seen it. And, um, and it's the idea that it's free for some users, but if you're a business user, you pay kind of $5 a month. And it's an add-on for people who run WordPress themselves. And so we have a couple of those. Um, check back with WordPress and Kismet are the three big ones. Most people don't know how we make money, which I actually think is kind of cool, <laughs> right? Because that means we're not doing your face about uh, growing it. And um, there's a, it's funny, I was, I was talking actually to one of the Google guys, and he said, you know, right before IPO, that was our most common question. And at that point, they were already making, you know, huge amounts of revenue. People were like, so how do you make money? It's kind of cool. Yeah, uh, the first two questions, remember? Yeah, yep. So I brought a prize for you guys, for the first two people that asked questions, and I think we've done dinner, I think it's you two guys. <laughs> so we have these books. Hey, tell us about it. Tell us about this book. It has underwear on the cover. Please don't whisper and talk about underwear in here. It's really inappropriate. Uh, 
at events, you mean? <laughs> yeah, just looking around. Yeah, I get this guy as a joke, right? Because mostly, like I said, we're typing. Or if you're, uh, you're, you're a video meeting, it's just, you know, your webcam, so it's just your face. So it was a joke that his team had done all of our, but we're trying to not emphasize that as much. It's a, a weird thing to talk about, but it's a catchy title, and it's a really great book. So if you want to know more about how Automatic really works on the inside, I'd recommend checking it out. so far, have you come across uh, projects that when you look at them, you think the potential that these things might have would be bigger than anything you've done or seen so far? And if you have, what do you do to propel them to that fullest potential? And if not, what would you do if you had come to that? So to the first question, I am from Texas, but Houston is <laughs> the more I drink, the more I get that southern drawl. Um, yeah, in terms of potential, I actually have to be totally honest. I think I'm a terrible uh, judge of whether an idea will be a good idea or not in the future. I thought YouTube was the dumbest thing I'd ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, uh, Uber, all these things, when I first saw them, I didn't really understand it. So I think that's actually more to your, the point of what you asked, is um, regardless of who it is and how much you admire them or something, if they think you have a terrible idea, it might just be that you're on someone. Uh, most people didn't think they would throw in the world for another CMS, and in fact, that was the biggest. One more, and then we'll end. Hashtag start Brian at photo, P H O T O M N T T. It better be a good one. <laughs> um, I, actually, I was just wondering the, you talked a little bit about some of the media organizations that you partner with and that you run their CMS. And I was wondering if you could just elaborate a little bit more on the organizations that you work with and how those partnerships come together because they're very historical organizations that have a lot of legacy ways of doing things that I would imagine you would know, shake some of those beliefs to the, to the core. So we work with 100% uh, of the smart media organizations. <laughs> <laughs>
Let's give Matt a big, huge round of applause.